Remember that video I did about the hardest GCSE question, where Edexcel essentially collated a load of questions that students really struggled on? Well, I found another one here, and it's a calculator version. So I just thought we'd have a bit of a look and see if any of the questions are absolutely mad. Um, I'm actually in Lisbon and I've not got my calculator, so I'm probably not going to end up doing any, unless I can do one without a calculator, but let's just see what's popping up. Okay, so a bit of stats here, and we need a frequency polygon. See, here's the thing, there's nothing too crazily new about this question, right? We draw a frequency polygon, we know how to do that. This one, you're probably going to have to do a bit of thinking, but how many? Okay, 10%, so 1 in 10 got that fully right. Total surface area, again, I think that's pretty simple. There's definitely ways you can kind of mess up, but, you know, surface area of a sphere is in your formula book, right? Um, add a circle to it, you know, do a bit of halving because it's a hemisphere, <sighs> nothing too crazy. Let's go down, let's go to the good stuff. So what we got down there? Okay, so you got some trig, you probably a bit of Pythagoras thrown in there. Nothing too mad. What are we on? 6.6% 6 .6 already. So it is really not many students are getting these at all. Now, last time, the last question was only 0.2%. So I want to see if it's worse than that. Let's see what we got. Okay, 0.5% this time. So I think the other one's still got the, um, got the throne, as it were. We might have a look at that, actually, because I think I could do that without a calculator. Let's see what else we got, though. Look, this is a quadratic equation. You should know how to do that. This is, this is textbook, right? This is, this is the start of the textbook. You know, you, you can factorize, you can complete the square, you can use the quadratic formula, and you've got a calculator. So pff, I think you should be getting that. It's, it does have a part B though, to be fair. So I assume that most people lost the marks on this bit. But again, for the question, less than 1%, less than one in a hundred people got this, which that they should be getting. This, yeah, pretty tough. You have to multiply by y squared. You'll probably end up getting a quadratic. It might even be similar to that, who knows. What else we got? This is the last one. And again, yeah, generally like 2011, 2012, stuff like that. Let's, I think we can do this last one. I think we can do it because don't believe I need a calculator. Yeah, okay, sick. Let's give it a go. 0.5% of students. So that's what, one in 200 students got this right. It's ridiculous. Okay, so let's get a whiteboard up. So it's 2t squared plus 5t plus two that I wanna factorize. Okay, let's do it. So. 2t squared plus 5t plus 2. Okay, so the way I teach this on AI Tutor, when we have a number in front of the x squared or t squared in this case, is we multiply this number and this number together. So the a and the c in the quadratic equation, right? So multiply those together, I get 4. And now, you know when you just have an x squared and not like 2x squared, you do the thing where it's saying, okay, give me two numbers that add together to make this and times together to make this. Well, in this case, all we do is we find two numbers that add together to make the five still, but now times together to make this number here. So that's gonna be four and one, isn't it? Four times one is four, four add one is five. So what I now do is I write this, this term here as, and I'm gonna split it up as like this amount plus this amount. So instead of five T, I'm gonna write 40 plus one T or plus T and then I've still got the plus two on the end. That's literally all I've done. Changed five to four plus one. Now what I can do is I can kind of split this up into two separate sections, this and this. And I'm gonna try and take a common factor out of both of these, right? So I can see a common factor with these two terms. I can take two T out of both of them. And then what would I be left with for here? Well, what do I need to times two T by to get two T squared? Just T. What do I need to times two T by to get four T? Well, two, right? And then plus, and then I can't factorize anything out of here, but I'll just keep it as kind of what we have here. And then because of the way you've set this up, if, you, if you've done it correctly, something nice is always gonna happen. Look now at what we have in this term and this term. There is a common factor of t plus two. So I can take that whole bracket out as a common factor. So I've got t plus two, and then inside here, what do I need to times 2t, t plus 2 by to get, um, and no, what do I need to times t plus 2 by to get 2t times t plus 2? Well, that would be 2t. What do I need to times t plus 2, t and 2, man, it's, whoo, tongue twisters. What do I need to times t plus 2 by to get t plus 2? Well, that's just going to be 1, isn't it? 
So that's a pretty cheeky way of factorizing these. I personally can like, because I'm a nerd, I can kind of look at it and, and work out the numbers without having to do this. But I think this is an absolutely solid method, okay, to factorize quadratics where there's a number in front of their t squared. So I factorized it. That's actually the first part of the question. <laughs> Sweet. So the next part says explain why 2t squared plus 5t plus 2 can never be a prime number given that t is a positive integer. Okay, so the first thing I'm thinking, right, if you're stuck, is that we're always going to be using the previous part of the question, right? So essentially, the previous part of the question told me that this expression that they're talking about here, 2t squared plus 5t plus 2, is the same as this. And this is super important because we can look at this expression here and we can say, okay, well, the good thing is prime numbers, it's kind of, we're talking about factors, aren't we? You know, prime numbers, it's saying, you know, or oh, can this be factorized in a certain way? Or what are the factors of this? We've factorized this algebraic expression here. We've, we've broken it down into factors. The first factor is t plus two. The second is two t plus one. Okay, now, t must be a positive integer. So one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. What do we know about prime numbers and their factors? Well, we know that for prime numbers, they are numbers for which the only factors are itself and one, okay? So for example, three is a prime number because the only factors are three and one, okay? Seven is a prime number because the only factors are seven and one. Nine is not because three is a factor of nine, right? So here's the thing, right? If something's a prime number, one of the factors has to be one, okay? So if this thing here was a prime number, one of these would have to be one, okay? Let's start writing a bit of this down. So for a number to be prime, one of its factors has to be one, okay? So then we can look at this and we can say, okay, well then surely if this thing is prime, then one of these, we've, we've, we've already split it up into its factors, must be one. But can any of these be one? Well, I don't think they can, right? Because if, for example, this one was one, I would get t plus two equals one, which would lead to t to be minus one, but we know that t must be positive. T must be a positive integer, so, it, so that can't be it. Again, if this thing was one, two t plus one equals one, we would get two t equals zero, or t equals zero, but again, we know that t has to be positive. So basically, both of our options, they don't work, do they? So there is no way for any of these factors to be one. So we can say here, you know, for a prime, one of its factors has to be one. Um, you know, if t is positive, if t is a positive integer, it is impossible for either of these factors to be one. Therefore, it can't be prime. And that would be the answer to this question. So I definitely assume that the marks would have been lost on this last bit here. It is quite confusing because it's really making that jump between, you know, just algebra and actually this kind of like number theory and thinking about prime factorization and all of that weirdness. But there you go. If you got that right, you are in the top 0.5% of GCSE students. Well done.